Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday Q&A call. Uh, today, we're going to be giving you a couple of updates on Aspen and our view on Aspen to help you make a decision around that share, should you hold it. Um, I've got Vaughn who's going to be doing the explaining. Uh, and then we're going to open the floor for some Q&A straight after Sean's dealt with the technicals as per normal. Uh, we look forward to your participation. If you have any questions that pop to mind, you can type them in the chat or ask them outright. Uh, once we open the floor for the Q&A, um, yeah, Vaughn, over to you, mate. Great, thanks, Sorrel. <clears throat> so, guys, as usual, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through it. My team usually talks about it, and I just want to um, acknowledge Muneb, um, Muneb Nona, who's on the call, who is the guy who did the heavy lifting on this one. <clears throat> So I'm just going to take all the glory. Um, essentially, on, on Aspen, we're going to cut through to the investment thesis. We've got a few slides here, but I'd rather focus on, on sort of the key issues for us. Um, and then we welcome to have a bit of a debate if there's a, a contrasting or conflicting opinion with ours, rather than going into a whole song and dance about the minutiae of the stock. Um, really, where we are <clears throat> with Aspen is that the background to Aspen is sort of in 2018, we know that Aspen had a near-death experience uh, basically because of debt. Um, that is something that does scar us quite a bit in terms of our thinking. Um, we are always very careful about companies that um, drive themselves into a position where they have a near-death experience like this, um, like Aspen, which is essentially a long history of m and In that particular case, it, um, it didn't end particularly well, and they've been digging themselves out of it for, for a while. And um, at the moment, it's uh, been somewhat successful uh, for the last year. It's up about uh, 50 odd percent from the 150 to the 250. But therein lies the, the rub of what do we do now? So if we have a look at it um, in terms of, of healthcare, uh, the only game in town is really you want to be obesity, um, which is really a derivation of the diabetes drugs. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of diabetes, Diabetics are struggling to get their injections because all the normal weight people are stealing their um, their diabetes drugs or it's been manufactured for that. Interestingly enough, I don't know if anyone saw, last couple of days, Nova Nordisk has come out and they missed their numbers in the US uh, primarily because um, less demand or less pricing as well. The combination, basically the pricing is more the issue of uh, the um, the basically the fat loss drugs because there's a whole bunch of people that have thrown a whole bunch of money at it and now it's um, starting to to teeter a little bit. So Aspen, um, if if we'll talk about it in the, the next page, but that was the background to it. The valuation is that we see it as 20% downside or 19% downside, an intrinsic value of around about 196 rand, call it 200, versus the 240 that it's trading at right now. Um, and the real issue is, um, as we said, in our minds, Aspen has become a show me stock, not a, not a tell me stock. Um, and we need to see some of it um, eventuating. There is some potential. So if we look on the next slide and we break it down, look at the top right in the revenue, you've got prescriptions, um, which are somewhat limited in South Africa because you've got single exit pricing. So you do struggle with the government to get the pricing you'd like to get. So that's a bit of an issue. Um, you've got manufacturing, which is largely contract manufacturing, which means that you're going to struggle again with the margins because it's not your intellectual property. You're using somebody else's intellectual property. Um, that can be quite a nice business if they go ex-patent um, and you can make a decent margin, but you're never going to make the margin of the Novas. But equally, you're never going to have the money to spend on the R&D like the Nova Nordisks and, and the Eli Lillies. So an OK business and not spectacular. And then you've got over the counter, which is a nice margin business. Um, but obviously in South Africa, you're selling that. Um, and if you don't have very strong GDP growth rate, you don't have underlying growth rate. So there is some solid opportunities for this kind of business. Um, however, it's not, you know, the, the top end of the risk curve or the top end of the return curve, which is where your, your offshore guys come in. Um, having said that, one must be cognizant of the environment that we're in. And these kind of healthcare companies tend to be a relatively good investment when the market gets volatile. And as you've seen the last week, we've seen a lot of volatility coming out of the US as the uh, difference of opinion emerges between those that think um, soft landing and or um, 
basically the tech boom is going to go forever. And those that think uh, the Fed hiking rates over the last two years is eventually going to have an impact. And we had a little bit of a, a collision of the expectations of the two sets um, on Monday, which was fascinating to see that the VIX, which is the volatility measure, was so incredibly high, touched 65 intraday, which is the third highest ever. Now, as some wags in the press have put it, you've had sort of COVID crisis and you had the GFC and then you had a slight miss on the, on the uh, non-farm payrolls and that caused it. Un unfortunately, though, one must use that as an indicator of just how stretched the positioning was and what happens if a whole bunch of people try and change their minds at the same time. So uh, healthcare companies can be good in the circumstance, but in our particular case, we, we far prefer uh, life healthcare. As I say, Aspen in our mind is a show me rather than a tell me stock. Uh, we just pop over the debt. If you look at the debt, the left hand side, they're in a better position than that they were, um, but clearly it's been a long, hard road for them. Um, if we look down here, I'm going to jump over this because we explained about it, but this is the second part of it, is that there's potential opportunities, probably twofold mainly, one into, into Africa, let's call it contract manufacturing um, for governments going into Africa, for which they would be positioned. Um, and the th second thing is sort of sterile, uh, which might be linked to their relationships with, off the top of my head, I think it's Nova and Lilly. Um, but that is obviously contract manufacturing on a on a limited margin. And if you have a look at the valuations on a forward basis, so this is clearly taken into account, which, as you know, we're a little bit nervous about forward because it assumes that the EBITDA is going to eventuate, which it never does. Um, and there's always adjustments made to it. But on a forward basis, assuming they deliver those EBITDAs, then you're sitting with essentially um, a expensive multiple going forward. So for our perspective, from a fundamental perspective, we are a little bit nervous about this one. Um, and whereas other companies, you could take into account and give them the benefit of the doubt, this is not one in our mind that we give the benefit of the doubt to. Um, so I'm going to jump over there. Um, and I'm going to jump over to the technicals, which is a lot more positive. And I'll hand over to Sean to talk technicals um, as to what you should do in the short term with this thing. Sean. Morning, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> technical and positive. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we <laughs> we look at uh, at the uh, technicals of of uh, aspirin. There, you can see uh, very similar to a lot of other charts we've discussed in a few weeks. It's a bit of a sideways market. Um, yeah. So the share price at the moment is trading above that twenty day and fifty. Or sorry, but just below. Uh, this is until yesterday's uh, close. Just below the twenty and the fifty day moving averages. But it's still trading uh, far above the uh, 200 day moving average, is that yellow one at the bottom there. Um, so, yeah, I'm calling the, the long term trend uh, bullish still. Um, but in the medium term, as I said, it's a bit of a, a neutral or a trendless a sideways market. Um, it's trading in that narrow sideways range. I think it's just consolidating at these levels. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the share price is trading above that long term, that ascending support trend line. Which is around about the 226.90 level, um, as well as that that very short term um, support level at about 226.40. Um, at the moment, I see now it's, it's trading at uh, 231, so it's just down 0.17% from yesterday. Um, so yeah, that sideways trading range, but neutral, a bit of no man's land at the moment. Should those uh, support levels not hold? Uh, we could expect a pullback to that previous, I call it resistance zone, between 208 and uh, 208.11 and 199.67. As Vaughan said, now that's still uh, above our intrinsic value of 196.14. Um, so I'm not very really positive about this stock at the moment. As I said, it is a bit of new, uh, neutral territory. You can see also at the bottom there the MACD indicator, the oscillator is trading in overbought territory above the zero line. But it's also trading below its uh, signal line. It's giving a, a bearish signal. So it's a bit difficult to call this one at the moment. That's how I see it. Thank you. Cool. Just to add to what Sean says, obviously, they're going to report on the 3rd of September. And according to consensus, obviously, the earnings are a little bit weaker than the previous year. So maybe that's explaining a little bit of this. And then you could take the opportunity post 3 September to have another good look at it. Um, so you can see why Sean does the technicals and I don't because I looked at that line and thought, yeah, oh, this looks bullish. Um, but he's uh, he's giving you the full insight. 
let's leave it there. Yeah, look, there the, is the a support trend line, and I mean, it has traded up from November last year till now. Um, it has been in a, in, a, in a bullish trend, but as Sean has noted, I mean, it's made a double top there uh, on the right hand side, and it's it's fairly sideways from there. And as Vaughan says, if those results, markets do discount future happenings in the results and anticipate that, but um, sometimes when the results come out and they are poor, uh, uh, then, then the market overreacts and goes the other way. So we could still see that support line broken and, and, and then Vaughan, Vaughan would be 100% right in saying that it needs to return to some intrinsic value because these oaks have been have proven themselves to take some wild chances in the past and, and it's almost cost them. So, um, so yeah, there may be a much better opportunity down at the low, lower levels, but for now, certainly in our view, very expensive. Um, let's have a look at uh, the chat quickly and see if we've got any questions. Don't see any at this stage. Um, anybody want, wants to ask one outright? Just switch on your mic, guys. Good questions for Vaughan? Nothing. Maybe oh, so I'll, maybe yeah. so I'll ask, ask the people here, what do, they, what do they think, given the gyrations of the market? Are they going to be buying in this uh, market or are they going to be selling in this market? That's a good question. I mean, with the market as volatile as it is now, um, are, are, are you guys thinking cash or waiting to buy something, or are you actually liquidating portions of your portfolios? Anybody want to comment? Shall I put a poll up for us quickly? I think so. I Maybe think it's so. the Oaks. They don't want to ask us the question. Let's put the poll and they can vote. I'll just have a look at the chat. Don't worry. So the first question from Xander is what's the PE ratio? So you can see over here the PE forward. Um, we always put a health warning on PE forwards because you've got to, you've got to assume that the uh, earnings actually comes through. It's 14 times. Um, on our kind of basis, it's sort of it's uh, exp uh, slightly expensive average versus average. Um, but as I said, you know, we, we're not prepared to give it the benefit of the doubt at this point in time. Um, in the current markets, I think there are various views. Our own positioning is a lot um, more bearish. Uh, we think those non-farm payrolls and we think the US is slowing down worse than what has been discounted by the market. Um, so one must just be very careful uh, when you get these levels of volatility. I would just give the guide, as I said, when you get the huge levels of volatility, there's a huge difference of opinion. Um, which tends to to make for a, a very exciting market um, and not often fun if you uh, you're wanting to be long. Lucky or good comment there, um, guys. Uh, sorry, I pressed the wrong submit button here. But whilst we're on it, uh, won't you go? Won't you give me an indication whom of you have completed that stockbroker of the year survey for us? As I've explained in past meetings, we do get a lot of value from that, learning what you guys need from us and what the requirements are. We get a comprehensive report. So if you'll just indicate for me whether you, you have completed it or not. Uh, there on my little survey there. 60% um, of the people say they haven't. Uh, okay, it's 60% of five. So it's three out of five. Oh. You naughty buggers. We need you to complete that so that we can understand what you need from us. So please, if you pop over to the link and spend 20 minutes on there, you can win 10,000 bucks in your BDA account. Um, so so please, the survey ends on Monday and, and we really need your participation. Okay, so we've done that one. It's only five of us who responded to the survey. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We've got 633 so far. So uh, uh, the yeses are winning. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. You see, all I had to do was ask Vaughan. Right. So let's go to this one. Let's go to Vaughan's question. It says, the market is volatile. I am. Right. Looking to sell, looking for buy opportunities, or sitting on my hands. Which one would you say describes you best? Nice. See. Nice, nice to see the bulls are winning. Yeah, the bulls are always lurking somewhere, sitting waiting for opportunity. Right, clearly, uh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think these these short-lived dips, 
don't really provide you with enough comfort to, to, to take a proper stab at it, man. I, I would actually like to see this market come down for a week or two and Oaks to really panic. Or maybe what we can do is uh, maybe next week when we do it, Sean can have a, a look at the technicals on the S&P and uh, the Aussie as well, just for interest sake for, for the guys. Because yeah, that's interested be. in what's going to happen. Yeah, that is, that is a good idea, Vaughn. Good idea. We'll get Sean to do that. As as on next week, uh, I won't be available next week, but Vaughn will be hosting for us with Sean and them. And, and the stock to be discussed next week will be PPC. Um, so uh, so we'll give a uh, results update on that. But as Vaughn said, he's also going to look at the broader market and, and Sean's going to give us a bit of a, a look at the S&P and a look at the Aussie and just see what, what those things look like from a technical point of view. I think it'll be a nice open discussion on, 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 on the market rather than being uh, very share specific. So so looking thanks forward to that one. Yeah, and, thanks and very much for hosting it for us, Vaughn. Cool, um, and we can blame Sean when things go wrong. <laughs> we could always do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got no more questions here. We've got 77% of the people who have responded here to say that they're looking for buy opportunities. Um, we've got 57% of the people saying they've completed the stockbroker of the year survey and that the, the, the rest don't need 10,000 bucks. So, uh, so with that said, I've, I've got no more questions. I see on Aspen and them. We just to uh, reiterate, we think Aspen's expensive. Um, we think there are opportunities for the company, but uh, at current valuations, it's very expensive. And and our preference from a stock picking point of view is uh, life health care. So uh, Vaughn, thank you very much for your time. Sean, thanks yeah. for your insight. And we look forward to hosting you guys next week. Have a fantastic Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thanks, Vaughn. Ciao. Bye.